my topic for today is going to be how urban legends have shaped American culture. And this happened to my grandma's friend a long time ago that she was out in a nightclub and she was out there just having some fun with her friends and a man, a really handsome man, comes up to her and asks her to dance. So she goes ahead and dances with the man, knows that he's a very good dancer and she's like, something must be up with this guy. So her, her, uh, her suspicions were correct when she looked down and noticed that the man didn't have feet, he had hooves. She lets out a scream, everyone's freaking out. The man disappears, only leaving the scent of sulfur, which is the devil's scent. Of course, it, this didn't happen, <laughs> this is just a story. And Jose was cool to listen to, right? But that's considered an urban legend. Urban legends are just stories that we tell people, it can be around the campfire, we hear it on the internet, we just spread it around just to, for entertainment purposes. And urban legends, as you can see, I'm shaking. <laughs> <laughs> urban legends arise in any context where stories are told around the campfire, internet chat rooms, uh, casual conversation. They help people amuse themselves, try to make cultural nerve, norms and values, and express commonly held fears. First, we'll look at how teens were scared from doing any sexual activity. Then, we'll look at how women were kind of guilted in going into the workforce. And finally, we'll kind of stem into how we kind of look around our hotel rooms whenever we go to, when we travel around hotels. So, the first tale is basically to talk about sexual, um, or keeping teens from going out, staying out night, doing sexual things. Well, a couple are out in Lover's Lane. Just, you know, I don't want to say just make it out, whatever. And the radio turns on and is letting them know that a skate crazy man has left from a mental institution. And of course, this kind of freaks the girl out. She's like, oh, no, I kind of want to go home. And the guy's like, oh, whatever, calm down. That's just a radio. They're just saying stuff. And she's like, no, I really want to go home. The guy's really pissed and goes, whatever, I'm not going to get any tonight. So. <laughs> <laughs> So he turns on his car, drives on home, and takes her to the girl's house. Well, when the girl gets out of the car, she lets out a horrific scream because there on the car door is a bloody hook. <laughs> now, according to Thrillist, which is a website, it lets us know that um, there are many variations of the story. It's always the, uh, the car radio is basically the boy's conscious telling him, saying, what you're doing is wrong and that what you should stop doing, you should stop doing it now before you get into trouble. But um, the site goes on to say that the boy who wants to get his hooks into the girl is frustrated by her unwillingness, but on some level he knows what he's doing is wrong. Bringing us back to the reason why this cautionary tale was so widespread. It was basically to keep teenagers from being out late at night, parents freaking out what's going on, and keep them from doing stuff that they probably shouldn't be doing. <laughs> hmm. Now, the second tale, now this one happened in, De this one happened in Detroit a few years ago. Um, well, actually not a few years ago, this was back in the 60s actually. <laughs> well, this mother, she wanted to join the workforce. Her husband was working, they needed an extra income to support the child that they just had. So she went to the workforce, she actually got a babysitter to watch her kid. and. She met the girl, the girl seemed fine, and mom went out to work, called the babysitter like into her shift, letting her know, seeing what's going on. And the babysitter was like, yeah, everything's fine. I went ahead and uh, I went ahead through the turkey into the oven for dinner whenever you all ready. So when you get home, I can just do that. Mom thinking to herself, okay, that's kind of cool. Yeah, get dinner started. Then it clicks, you don't have a turkey. So mom freaks out, goes home, notices that the babysitter is freaking out on the chair, like sobbing, crying, and the babysitter is just like pointing to the kitchen. The mom runs over to the kitchen and finds that the baby was actually in the oven. Now, like I said, this story was just to keep mothers from going into the workforce. You know, there are those older generations saying, mom should stay home, watch the kid, but nowadays women are out and about and join the workforce so they can have a double income with their families, they can have support. And <laughs> so basically it's basically saying when you're leaving your kids, when you go to work, you're leaving it with strangers, you don't know who you're leaving them with. So that was just another cautionary tale. This 
final tale is basically a couple that are driving to a wedding. They're driving to a friend's wedding. And as the, the trip gets a little long, they kind of fall off into a motel just to get some sleep. Well, they notice that the mattress that they're sleeping on is has like a weird smell, it's all lumpy. And they chalk it up to saying, okay, it's a cheap motel, just gonna be here for one night, whatever. So the next morning, the husband's kind of curious. He's like, okay, what's up with this smell? Is it like, is it mold? Are we sitting by a bad van? We should probably tell the manager what's going on. Well, his suspicions were, were peaked whenever he actually picked up the mattress and found that it was inside. It was actually a dead body. Now this story is actually true. According to history.com, there was actually, uh, this actually happened back in Vegas whenever the gangs were actually in control of Las Vegas. So they would take care of their snitches, they would take care of the people who would go against them, and they would hide them like in the weirdest places. They had them like in mattresses, hot springs, cupboards, closets, anywhere obvious that the body would be found. So that was kind of cool. Well, that was interesting to read. <laughs> An urban legend is just a form of modern folk tale. It usually consists of fictional stories, often presented as true, with scary or funny elements rooted in local culture. These legends can be used for entertainment purposes, for explanations, for random events, and such as like disappearances and like aliens and stuff like that. Urban legends are just stories to entertain us. Some are scary, some are gross, some are just plain weird. But they make us think and Make, they make us think and make us be more on alert when we go to new places. We put a new perspective on places that we even take for granted. We go every day and be like, oh, we're going to the mall. It's like, what could have happened at that store over there? <laughs> like, you don't know what's going on. What's hanging out in the men's bathroom at Sears upstairs? <laughs> well, we all have that one urban legend that sticks in the back of our minds. We like to believe that it happened to someone. But with the age of the internet, it's always hard to tell the true difference between truth and what's fantasy. But those. But those stories that go like, this happened to a friend of mine, are always interesting, right? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>